It's the Sheriff Podcast, baby Yeah It's the Sheriff HL Man of the Year 500 pro fights in his career Got the record for most ice fights In the season Chill. You fought the Sheriff, lucky you still breathe It's the Sheriff HL Man of the Year 500 pro fights in his career Boom. Got the record for most ice fights in the season Chill. You fought the Sheriff, lucky you we still We filmed the pod today you listen in tomorrow. The heavyweight champ, yeah, Sean McMall. Sheriff. 13 year pro, yeah, he holding it down. Big man playing it right, thumbs up to the crowd. Let's go. Lucky season suited up, most tilts in the A, man. Sheriff badge on the bucket, heavy can play, man. Podcast trending, thanks for rocking with us, bro. Lived out his dream, yeah, he played in the show. Danny Grange managing, helping us gain shine. Welcome everybody to an exclusive edition of The Sheriff. Boy, oh boy, do I ever have a treat for you. Now, ladies and gentlemen, last winter, I received a call, which was an incredible opportunity for hockey. Now, at the time, I didn't really think too much of it, but the closer the date got, the more excited I became. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this opportunity was a referee position in a very exclusive arena in Toronto in the infamous Bill Bolton Arena. Now, the gentleman that gave me this opportunity at the time was a stranger, but became an incredible friend. And I'm going to introduce him right now. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls all over the world, I would like to introduce to you my guest tonight. He hails from Jaden Finch, Toronto. Yeah. At five foot nine, 190 pounds, he is a middleweight. He is a very talented gourmet chef. He has played and refereed all over Toronto, including Bill Bolton Arena, True North, and the ASHL. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, my friend, Mr. Sean McFarland. How are you doing, my man? Um, <laughs> thank you. That was awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Um, before we start, um, I've listened and or watched a lot of your episodes, not at all 173 yet, I'm still working on it. Um, and I've been here a, a handful of times with, with my younger son, Ryan. Yes, you have. And I felt the electricity of you introducing everyone, mm -hmm. but actually standding here, like I actually feel, I don't know if you saw the movie Powder. I, I have. That's, yes. I'm powder right now. The, the electricity well, is amazing. And I, it's, I, it's, I, it's so awesome. So I appreciate you. that, my man. If you can come to our bedroom every once in a while, <laughs> <laughs> and introduce me like that that'd be amazing it would help. that'd be it amazing would help. that'd be amazing that might be a new career path so thanks for the idea but sean i mean i'm i'm really excited to have you here tonight brother like this has been like a new career path for me since i've met you yeah and i'm so excited to talk about it because there's so many things to get into so the thing about me sean is i like to start my shows with kind of digging deep down finding out how these big characters on my show actually have come about. So now, one of the most interesting things, Sean, that I've seen for you is where you were born. Yeah. Cleveland, Ohio. That's correct. Can you explain that a little yeah, bit? So we're now in Toronto. Both my, <laughs> both my parents are Canadian. They were both, my dad was born in Hamilton. My mom was born in Sudbury. Um, at the time, they were working in the U.S. They were, they, um, they're working for racetracks. My dad grew up in that from trainer to, I, he might even race a bit, but he did anything that had to do with uh, horse racing, he was involved. So they were working uh, the circuit in the US. Um, they were living in Philadelphia where I was conceived. I don't remember. No. It was, no. It was dark. <laughs> um, but then they had moved to Cleveland and then I was born in Cleveland. And then I was think I was there for about six months and then uh, my grandmother, my dad's mom, my uh, Nana Terry, she had a place in Florida, so we lived there for, I think, over six months, and then uh, sh maybe before I was two, my mom had it with the U.S., and my grandfather said, you can come back, stay with me until you guys figure out your stuff, and then uh, we moved in with my grandfather, came back to Canada. So I'm Canadian. I'm Very Canadian, nice. right? I was raised so here. I was, yeah, I was raised here, but I was just, I was just born there. Right? So, yeah, so we lived with my grandfather who lived at Finch and Keel area. Off, uh, he lived right on Sentinel. 
and then shortly after that, uh, we bebopped around, and then we moved to uh, uh, Jane and Finch. Right on. So I actually kind of want to talk about Jane and Finch a little bit, because obviously it is a very, very popular area in Toronto. It's, I would say it's, it's, it's infamous as well. Now, one of the cool things is that you got to grow up with a kind of a pretty popular and incredible family, the Grant Mentises. Yes, I did. Yes, I so did. Now, one what, of them is here today. Yes, one is here today. I'm very excited yes. for the support. Yeah, let's, hear, let's, hear, let's hear it for the Grant Mentis family. So now I'm gonna get in. I'm gonna get into your family just now. But since we're into the Grant Mentises, can you explain how you first met the family? Well, I grew up uh, for the people in North York. Uh, I grew up in the Connection, and the Mentis family grew up in the Lane, which was basically just the other side of Jane Street. So Jane Street was a divider to our elementary school. So I went to Firgrove. Most of my friends in the Lane went to Yorkwoods. Uh, the youngest sibling is 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 Tony who's just a year older than me. So we, I knew them before. I just threw it in the neighborhood, playing baseball out in the field and whatever. And then once I went to junior high, which was Oakdale Junior High, then that's when I got even closer with Tony because we we're in classes in, in school together. And then I got closer with all his siblings. Um, his sister, she'll probably get mad at me, but her nickname is Poochie, but her name is Lois. Um, I had a mad, mad crush on her. Um, she was older. Woo-hoo! She was older. Whoa. She was older, and she I didn't always know about yeah. This. She would always tease me and say, "Sean, when you're 16, you know, give me a call." And then when I turned 16, she was nowhere to be found. <laughs> so, but then there was Nadine, who was the older sister out of the six, who was like everybody's uh, big sister. And then there was Bobby, who was the oldest, who uh, who's no longer with us. Um, God bless his yes. soul. And uh, then there was Chicky who, someone like me, he was very athletic, and he's a good-looking guy, always had the best clothes, he had a beautiful girlfriend that lived in the connection, and a lot of us idolized him. So anytime that he gave us the time of day, it was a big deal. And he was a big-time ball hockey player. Yes. And I used, to, he used to, I used to like hang around with him, and he would let me, and uh, he used to take me to his ball hockey games. When he played, way before Midnight Express, um, he was playing for Midas, and I would see him and, and Bobby play, and that's why I got hooked on. And at that time, there was no, like, a lot of kids' leagues. There were, my son Ryan plays in. Like, it, you didn't get to play ball hockey until you are 18. Yes. So I, it was once I turned 18, and then, you know, I got on a team and played from there. And then, obviously, Chickie's kids, twins, are Michaela and Marquis, right? I was just going to say, so now, this is a royal family for hockey in Canada yep. by far. Yep. For the younger generation, Marquis Grant Mentis, who I believe is playing in the Federal League this year, and then, of course, the incredible Michaela Grant Mentis, yep. who had an incredible season last year, some controversy this year. She's an incredible player. I am going to try to get Michaela on the show very soon. So, Michaela, if you're watching, put me into your schedule. Well, I'm going to be, uh, my son and I are going to uh, Ottawa for the 26th to the 28th. And it just happens to be that weekend, Ottawa is playing Montreal, and Michaela now plays for Montreal. Yes. Oh. So I had reached out to Chicky, and he's, she's hooking me up with a meet and greet um, with, with Ryan and the friends that we're going with. So I'll also remind her that she okay, needs good. to come back on the Sheriff Show. Right on. So now, Sean, I know, I know that you're a big family man. Yes. Before we get into the family, there's another family that I, I would like to talk about, which is our sponsorship, our support for the show. Yep. So I'm gonna get I'm gonna kick it off with Nutrifarm. So yep. now I know these are all personal friends of yours. They are I now. would like to say my little spiel if you don't mind, you yep. can say a little bit as well. So Nutrifarms, ladies and gentlemen, uh, a big supporter of the uh, is power. The Sheriff Podcast is powered by Nutrifarms, grass-fed steaks and chicken. Nutrifarms is really good about doing your groceries better while giving back to the community because it is a local community, ladies and a local company, ladies and gentlemen. We also have Joseph Tucci, one of the best names I've ever heard of in my life, <laughs> real estate agent. His MO is value, integrity, and performance. That is the blueprint for Joseph Tucci. I want to thank him for supporting our show as well. Last but not least, we have Modern Mafia. My buddy Matthew Lund, one of my yes, I got I gotta give a clap because he is here in studio. 
Matthew Lund was one of my favorite partners this year refing. He is the founder of Modern Mafia, guys. Please check it out on Instagram. It is absolutely incredible. We have hats, we have socks, we have swag, we got everything, and we have Matthew that we're gonna speak to a little bit later. And, la and <laughs> that was second last but not least. Last but not least, Raymond LaRose, dear friend of mine, also sponsored the show. Raymond plans on opening a youth center in the future. All around great guy, really tough individual. I would not want to fight this guy. Thank you, Raymond LaRose. Yes. And just quickly, even about uh, Ray, he actually, he's on one of my Facebook pages that I run. It's called Sharing is Caring. And it's all food dishes. And, That's right. Um, I don't know how much of it that he, re he um, does, but his wife, the food that she posts is like unbelievable. So he's a big supporter of sharing his caring also. Raymond, I wasn't aware of, of this cooking. I might have to try some of this in the near future if that's all right with you, my friend. All right, right on. So Sean, big family man you are. I knew this from one of the first times that I met you because it's pretty much all you talk about is how much you care about your kids, your wife, yeah. and the extended family. So the one thing I, I kind of wanted to do was, you know, I've, I've had the opportunity. I know that you have two sons. Yes. I've had the opportunity to meet one. Uh, Ryan, very, very incredible young man. I would actually like to surprise, call Ryan McFarlane up right now for a couple minutes with the sheriff and Sean McFarlane. Yes. Yes. Ryan, Ryan, Ryan. Okay, so step up a little bit here, Ryan. So yeah. I know I'm very hyper, I'm moving around, so don't mind me. Right. Um, just wanted to ask you a, a quick couple of questions, buddy, because I know you're a big part of this right now. Right. So I know that you recently have completed an online course for officiating in ball hockey, okay? Yeah. Now, I believe maybe April 20th might be an important date to you. Would you like to explain a little bit about that? Yeah, so April 20th is uh, when the first game starts. So um, This I'm, is ball hockey? Yeah, for ball yes. hockey, yes. So I'll see, I think we'll get the age group soon for me to obviously referee because I can't do my age group or older. I have to do others three years younger. And, yeah, three years younger, and how yeah. old are you, Ryan? I am 14, turning 15. 14 wow. years old? Yeah. Oh, Great man. Nine. Okay, well, nine. ladies and gentlemen, pay attention to this face right here. You're going to be seeing a lot of it. I think yeah. you may be the face of ball hockey, my friend. Thank you so much. Yeah. 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 Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. I had to bring him up. Ryan's a really tough guy too, and he was kind of giving me some eyes. So I had to, I'm like, I better bring this guy up, introduce <laughs> him, so he settles down, and we can all have a good time. But I want to thank you for coming up, brother. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you so much, man. Yeah. Take it easy, buddy. Thank you, Ryan. But we are not done no. because there's an older brother named Nicholas, yes. which is coming up right now. Nicholas, Nicholas, Nicholas. How you doing, buddy? Good, how are you? I'm great, buddy. I'm absolutely wonderful. So now you, I heard that you're a pretty good swimmer. Yes, that would be Is true. that true? That is true, yes. Now, <laughs> you're lifeguarding, but you're also about a session away of being able to teach swimming as well. Yes, that is correct. Awesome. So when did you start doing the swimming, and, and what are your intentions moving forward? Uh, I don't know. I, I don't remember what age I was when I started swimming. But I can say within like the last few years, I've been like kind of focused on it more, like moving up. Like just like last year in March break, I did my uh, bronze cross, and uh, just last March break, I did national lifeguard. So uh, and now I'm to, to teach all I need is to one more course, and then as you know, I'm gonna be uh, te teaching people how to swim. Well, I mean, I might need you to get me to teach me how to swim, buddy. I'm not the best swimmer. I'm really good at the doggy paddle. Yeah. You know, I can I can stay afloat <laughs> for a while. Yeah. I'm just not the fastest guy, so I may, I may need your help. Yep. So now, quick question for you. There's been a couple sightings of like sharks in, in off the Florida coast. Yeah, yeah. Do you think that you might be able to outswim a shark? The question is, would a shark survive with me in the water? That is the bigger question. <laughs> that is the bigger question. <laughs> you got it, man. But hey, I, ladies and gentlemen, the swimming master right here. Thank you so much for coming up, brother. I, I had to bring you up because yeah. you're such a big, important part of this man right here, okay? I had to bring you up. Thank you so much for coming up, you. man. And handsome. Very, very handsome individual as well. I must, I, I must say that as well. Sean, you did a great job, brother. Well, it's not Absolutely right. great job. It's still going on. I know it's, it's, still, I know it's still going on, but you've been doing a great so, job so far. Sean, thank you for doing that. That was amazing. That's, uh, yeah, no, hey, no problem. I, I'm, hey, I, I, feel, I feel honored to have any part of your family up here, man, so it's incredible. 
So now, Sean, I, I wanted to get in to some funny stuff because the thing is, is like, I played professional hockey for about 15 years, okay? I retired, let's say, four or five years ago. Yep. Now, I have been trying to find something that I'm passionate about, something that I want to do for the rest of my life, and I and to this up to this year, I wasn't really able to find that. I am an aspiring broadcaster. I want to be Mr. Sports Center. I want to be the modern Don Cherry. Okay, that's what I want to be. But I also want to do things that are productive in my life. And when you gave me the opportunity to ref, that opened up a new career path for me. It made me set my goals so high. And I was also told that in the NHL, really they're looking for former role players that did play that can really hold the, the thing down. We got some, we got some more, really more cool fans. fans outside trying to get into bottom line. It's absolutely rocking here tonight. <laughs> but I kind of wanted to ask you, Sean, I know I'm going on about that. I wanted to ask you, like, what, what was it that made you do that phone call when we first connected? So what it was, I was, you know, scrolling through Instagram and I follow Spit and Chicklets. Yes. So I'm a big fan of uh, their podcast and I happened to see the podcast that you were on. And I remember watching it and saying, who's this guy? I just see this guy talking with all this emotion, talking about Don Cherry and he's not a racist. I know firsthand because he gave me his phone number. It's like, who is this guy? And I started, oh, and I saw it said the sheriff. I said, I remember that name. And I just saw your energy and I said, this is a guy that I'm definitely going to follow. And at that time, seeing that you were a big personality, um, knowing that my summer league was, you know, starting obviously, in, well, in the spring, um, I thought there's one day a year that we do a Saturday. Yes. And beside Bill Bolton Arena, there's a big park. So Great we usually setup. play two games. Everyone gets two games. And then we go to the park and have a barbecue. The coolers are out, have a few drinks. Um, this year I was able to... Uh, again, um, Nutrifarms had sponsored it. They gave uh, beef patties, uh, burger patties to all the teams. Um, I was able to get uh, Oxford Massage to come out and set up tables for their students to get hours for massages. That's awesome. And anyway, so I thought, if I can reach out to you to come and tell some stories, because obviously 15 years of professional hockey, 500 fights, HL Man of the Year, the sheriff, I thought he would have some stories. I'll get him to drop. Feel really good about Well, myself, you should. Eh? Come drop the puck, some tell some stories, sign some autographs. So that was through a DM. And within like 45 seconds, you responded. And I thought, I'm just going to take a chance. He's a big shot. He's probably not even a whatever. <laughs> you did. And we talked. And I said, listen, I, oh, if you come, like I said, we're going to have a barbecue. I mean, I don't have a budget to pay your appearance fee, which I'm sure is large. Oh, I but I can feed you, is what I said. And you were, in, I mean, then you ended up said, you said, here's my number. Even before I offered you my number, you said, here's my number. I go, here's my number. And then you call me. So then we just started talking. And then I continue following you. I saw you with the ref jersey on with kids. So I messaged back to you. I said, I go, Sean, do you, are you a ref? And you went, oh, it's, it was more for the kids. It was like volunteering. But, you know, it was just, I, I, I did, the, I enjoyed it, though. And I said, and you went, why, are you looking? I go, I'm always looking. Boom. Then he called me. And then we just talked, and you said, listen, you kind of sparked something, I'd be interested. I said, Sean, if you're willing, I said, I know you haven't done adults, it's a whole different level than volunteering to little kids, but you know, you've been in the game your whole life, you know the rules, every house, every league has different rules, but not crazy enough that you're not gonna remember. It's usually icings or whatever, penalties, depending on the minutes. And you were in, and, I, and you obviously kept thanking me, and I just said, no, no, no problem, just come, and it'd be amazing. And it worked out. Some people knew who you were, and then things dropped down a little bit, knowing that the sheriff was on the ice, huh. that they couldn't act up, right? Yeah. So that's how it started. And then, and I had you read. I had you for the first game. I had you for the first, which was actually my birthday. So we actually physically met on my birthday. Right on. Well, well, the, well I, I gotta give, I gotta give an applause for that because that's incredible. But Sean, so the first thing, it's always good to be wanted. So when you made that call, I was extremely humbled by it. And I was like, you know what? There's going to become a day. There's going to come a day where you're not requested for things anymore because you're older and you're old right. news. So when you get that request, when you have people that want your company, you have to appreciate that and, and you have to take up on that. So now that's the first point. The second point for the roughing, I have to admit right now, Sean, I completely underestimated it. 
I was one of those hockey players that thinks that they know everything about the game, right. that they'd be able to ref, they could time keep, they could be commissioner, they could do whatever they wanted. Yeah. And I kind of want to talk about that first day that we met because <laughs> if there's any referees watching or listening right now, they'll know exactly what I mean by this, but there's certain equipment that you have to wear when you ref a hockey game. There's a couple things. There's a couple things. Couple things for protection, just, just, just totally standard. Yeah. So now myself, thinking one of those players that think I know everything, I didn't come with any equipment. I didn't come with a visor. No. I didn't come with a whistle that went on my finger. No. I had the whistle had the around my you, neck. You had the coach's whistle. Okay. And I think I was wearing the last team I played for is track pants as my referee pants, which is a big no-no for repping. So now, saying that, Sean, I need you to be completely honest because this is almost a year later. Yeah. What was going through your mind, man, allowing me to ref? <laughs> so when I, saw, when I saw the pants, the visor wasn't a big deal because I know you're a little bit old school and you probably have never had the visor. But it was a private league too, so I got right. away with so, that. Well, yeah, well my ins the insurance company allows no visor. Some of them okay. obviously automatically do, so that's why you're able to... It, wasn't a big, it was a big deal because I wanted you to wear it, just for safety. Um, and then the, the track pants is like, oh my God, what's this, this guy's killing me. <laughs> right? And then I saw the whistle. I go, Sheriff, what is that? What, what is that? He goes, oh, this, this. I go, but you can't be, you can't skate with it in your mouth because if you yeah. scream, then you're whistling. It will whistle or something. If you get hurt, whatever. You can't use that whistle. So I went to the pro shop and I had to buy him. I go, but here, this is my gift to you. I go, here's a whistle. This is how it goes on these fingers. One of the best gifts I'm, I've ever received. So just, to, just for a little bit of clarity. So I was wearing a whistle that was around my neck. I went out there as my first game refing. I would say it's at least high C, low B division. Yeah, I, I, would, I, would, I, would, I, would, I would go definitely B for sure. Okay, so With B a couple division. With a couple C players and maybe a small handful of A players. Which any referee knows that's incredible, incredible level of hockey. It's so really most good. of the guys are ex-junior players, maybe a couple ex-pro players. The point Some college, is they're college players college from the players. US. The point is they're in great shape, very fast, fast action. You got to know what you're doing out there. So I would say probably halfway through the first period, I, I get called over to the side and given a whistle that you're supposed to put on your fingers. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I had no idea about how the whistles worked with the refing, but I'm just very happy that this man saved me right here because I don't think I could have pulled off the rest no, of the you, game. No, you can't. You can't keep no. reaching for around my neck to, to call yeah. a penalty. You have to have it on your hand. It has to be that way. So. Now let's get to the other stuff. So now, have you ever seen a ref show up with no equipment like I did? Like has that ever well, I've happened? never, I've never, you're my first ref that basically had zero experience. So okay. every ref that has shown up had the proper equipment. Because okay. I think after that first game, I think I, I think I hit your shins. I said, but aren't you wearing shin pads? And I don't think you were. Or was no, I wasn't wearing any equipment right. at all. So I went to, so I always bring, I always bring my ref bag in case something happens and the ref's not able to show up. I always keep it in my car. So I went, I actually had, so he went for a whole game without wearing shin pads in this fast league off of face-offs and sticks. And if anyone knows anything off your shin, you're going to be crippled. And then especially a cold puck. So I, I had to, I had to lend him my, my uh, shin pads also that day. And maybe elbow pads. I think I gave him my elbow pads that day. Yes. Now, you had a really good staff of refs, though. Like, my experience right out of the gate, you know, you learn from your partners. Same as a player, you know, a veteran to a rookie. You know, you, you look up to the veterans. You try to learn from them. You try yeah. to copy different things. Create your own style. But take the best things from everybody that you respect. Now, the staff that you had was very high rated, in my opinion, bro. Like they, Thank you. They Thank all you. looked like professional refs. They all had all their equipment. They, they've, they've, been, doing it. they've been doing it a while. They've been, been doing, doing it for it a while. while. Now, again, Sean, complete honesty, it's okay. I know that I was like really not prepared for that because of my, my lack of knowledge. But what did the other refs say about this? Like, were they like, Sean, where did you, where did you get this guy? Or like, well, the first day, I think you worked with, I think it was Matt Moyer, who was, uh, <laughs> uh, he's a lieutenant. I, there might be another title with him. That's that, right, he's, he's a officer. lieutenant with the police officer. Yeah. He I also, really liked him. Yeah, he's really good. He's been doing it. For, I, I met him through the arena. And because he had, when I used to play, so the, the league that I run, someone else ran it for like 20 years when they, and then they walked away and I grabbed it. But I played in it. 
So I've known Matt for over 20 years. And it's like I said, other than being a cop, he's been a ref for a long time. Yeah. Years experience. And that's why I paired him with you. So I wanted the most experienced guy with, with you. And I know he's patient and he would basically take you under his wing. And I think he did. I think you walked out of that first uh, three games feeling a little bit better than when you started. Obviously, Abs- being nervous. Absolutely, man. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, Matt. Matt's, and he also he also works for MLB. He does security at uh, like high end security at the uh, Blue Jay games. Yeah, I, I find that usually a lot of the big shot cops they do get those security opportunities, yeah, yeah, yeah. which is their bread and butter. Yeah, so. and he still makes time to come out and ref. I mean, which he really doesn't have to do, but he does, and he's a super super guy. I wanted to, and I appreciate you sharing that, Sean. So, like, I wanted to talk to you about, like, the transition that you had when you first became a ref, when you were inexperienced to starting to get some more confidence and getting thicker skin. Because I want to talk about that. So, now, I was the type of player, now, and I'll be totally honest, and I feel so bad about this now. I used to give the referees so much heck that I can't even explain it. In my mind, I thought I was giving my team a boost by kind of giving the refs a little bit of crap. You know what I mean? Like, right. come on, ref. Come on, you missed that. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. And then I'm thinking that the guys were like, yeah, well, let them know. Let them know. Like, I'm thinking that I'm, like, sticking up for my team in a way. Another thing that I used to do that I absolutely despise is the offsides. If I knew it wasn't offside, I would still yell, it's offside. Yeah just to see if I might be able to tweak the linesman's confidence a little bit and maybe he might call Call it it. thinking that he was off. Right. When guys do that to me, I feel like throwing them out of the game. It's 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 so annoying. It's unbelievable. But then I used to go back to my playing days and think, man, I I did this stuff all the time. I got to give this guy a mulligan. I mean, I know he's just trying to try to get it. Yeah, it's just one of those things that it's it continues no matter the generator. It's always something that it's going to happen. They're going to chirp. They're going to try and... Exactly. And I get that. When people yell that off, when they scream the offside, and I call the offside, and I'll, I'll look and say, yeah, I got it. Or sometimes you got to tell them, like, make them not feel dumb, but like, I got it. Like, or I'll just call them a ref. Are you the ref? But it's... You're going to get that always. You're always going to get that. I've learned some, like, kind of cool comebacks where it doesn't get the players too upset type right. of thing. You kind of have to give them a little bit of confidence and say, you're playing well, buddy. Keep going. Just just cut yep. out the crap type of thing. You know what I mean? But th- the thing that I want to get into next is the networking. The networking of the refs. It's absolutely incredible, the community that there is. The people that you get to meet is so similar to playing. And, and I think, Sean, that that's why I have so much passion for this is because it's just so similar to when I played. Yeah. I feel the same. When I played, I felt that I controlled the game. Because of the role that I played, I knew that everybody on the other team, except for maybe one guy, was not going to try to take me on. Right. That I could intimidate them and control them. Okay. Now, as a ref, I have the same feelings. I feel that I control the game. Yeah. Maybe I could be a little bit intimidating because they're afraid I might give them a penalty. It's the same type of feeling. So... The sense of belonging, the sense of being needed, the sense of control, I think is a big part of, of the refereeing. And people like me that like attention, yeah, <laughs> you go all in on refing if you're an attention seeker because you're definitely going to get it. I mean, you're wearing a shirt that everyone sees and it's different from everyone else's and yeah. unless yeah. you're working at Foot Locker. Um, yeah. that's, yeah. Everyone knows that's yeah. your jersey and it's a small like, uh, even though there's, there's hundreds of referees it's still a small com- community compared to refing because depending on the league that you're in it's you know a th- you know three person system or two whatever but yeah. it's just the two or three of you out there and that's it when you got you know 15 players on each side the goalie depending on the league you got parents you got coaches and they're all I mean and I and I told you in the beginning it's like to hopefully have a decent game is to stay on top of the like if you miss start missing offsides yeah. that's when it starts that's when the ball goes rolling the wrong way yeah and then they get upset and they take it out on them they're mad at you but they'll take it out on that uh, that player There's and they'll w- say you missed that high stick it's like okay so why are you high sticking him exactly. like, what did he do they now there, all these are the things that you got to deal with there's one way to kind of even if you even if you're wrong 
there's one way to kind of convince everybody that you may have been right, and that is position. Yeah. If you're in the right position and you can sell the call, yeah. even if you saw that it was a little bit offside, but you already had your hands up, you're like, no! Yeah. If you're in the position, who is anyone to say that right. you didn't make the right call? And I think that right was position? one of the first things I said to you, is that yes. if you're in position yes. and be confident, don't do maybe, right? Yeah. Do the, or if it's a goal. And sell it. Because I remember there, I think that, that first week times. there was a... There was a couple uncertain calls. There was, well, there, it was a goal, but I, I wouldn't say you're out of position, but it was fast. But because where I stand, I am behind the net. And you looked at me and I went like, like I gave you the okay, like I gave you the signal. It was a goal, like you're good, right? But there's people arguing with you. Yes. And yes. then, and, and then you went, <laughs> you point, you grabbed the players and you pointed to me. You went, uh, yeah, the commissioner said it was a goal, so it's a goal, <laughs> right? <laughs> and so when you came off, I said, listen, bud, you can't, don't. I go, just be confident to say if it, yeah. if it says a goal, be it a goal. Don't throw my name in because I'm not, I got to be a neutral part. I mean, I can't, I just kind of was giving you the thing as in, yeah, you're good. And then you, <laughs> you went, yeah, the commissioner said it's a goal. It's a goal. So. And I, I appreciate you sharing that story, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> so now, the, the other thing I wanted to kind of get into is, is like, you know, one of my, one of my good buddies, Daryl Dean, he, he has a company, Cocky, where confidence is everything. Confidence really is everything with refing. You have to yes. be super confident. That's why, like, like I, I, I really admire a lot of the partners that I'll have. Like, I'll, if I have never met them, I'll meet them. We'll be shooting the shit. But one thing that's consistent throughout is the confidence of every referee. Yeah. You, you have to be a certain type of personality. You have to have thick skin. Very. And you have to be very comfortable with yourself in order to be getting all the backlash yeah. that is a possibility. Yeah. So now... The end of this summer season at Bill Bolton, I went from no equipment, <laughs> telling yep. players that the commissioner said it was a goal, to the end, when I helped you with the ceremony, those last few games, I felt a lot more confident, and I felt pretty good about the experience that I had in the summer. So now, where I'm, getting to, where I'm going with this was the transition into the winter. So now, Scarborough Canlon, which is part of the ASHL loop, ladies and gentlemen. Yep. A gentleman by the name of Derek Trudell, he was the scheduler, and he gave me an opportunity to start in a winter league, which is pretty much where most refs kind of start their careers. So now let me tell you, Sean, and I want to ask you if you've ever had a similar experience. My first shift with Scarborough Canlon, and if Derek Trudell, man, if you're watching this, buddy, you've got to be laughing at this one. So they put me with the scheduler, the head referee, okay. right? Most of this was kind of like a tryout type of situation. But let's see if he can handle it type of thing. I think it was a B division again. Very fast. Yeah. I was cutting it a little bit close. I was on time, but I was cutting it a little bit close. So I was kind of rushing a little bit. Had more equipment at this point. So now I get out there. I get out there right on time with Mr. Derek Trudell. I'm not confident. This is a new league, new right. players. I don't know if any, it doesn't matter if people know who you are or not, but like in the summer league, everyone knew who I was. They knew I was just starting off. Yeah. A lot of guys were kind of giving me mulligans for mistakes. Yeah, now it's a new league. I'm with the head referee. Yeah. So there's something that the players have to sign. Every, every hockey player knows this. You got to sign the, the game sheet yeah. when, when you're in a men's league. Okay. So now it comes in a folder usually where it has both teams in it. Now in this folder is also the rule book in a lot of these leagues. So me not knowing any of this process, I get out on the ice. I think I was questioned about my first call. I called it offside. They're like, it's not offside, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, okay, man. Like, you know what I mean? My, yeah. my feelings are hurt a little bit. I don't have that confidence yet. So now the one team hands me the binder. And the guy says, here, don't, do you need this? So what I thought was he was saying, man, do you need the rule book to try to figure some things out? When really he was just passing me the signatures to give to the timekeeper, right? <laughs> right? But yeah, in yeah, my yeah. mind, I'm like, oh my God, man. Like these guys are complaining about my first call. I'm, I'm with the head referee. I'm getting the rule book handed to me. Like what am I supposed yeah. to do? I don't know what to do. When really it was none of that. It was all about experience. Once you gain that experience, Sean, it, it's just like playing. It's incredible how everything comes together. Yes, it does. Did you have any similar situations where you just 
you thought something was happening, but it really wasn't. You just needed to settle down and just come into your own. It's always I me. Mean, I, I started when I was 14, and Whoa. I was I was playing the league I was playing in. I was um, I guess it was I want to say I don't want to say, I know we're not allowed to say the names of it. So under 14. Yeah. Um, oh, I was the play, yeah. Okay, right. Yeah. I was on so. Whatever that was called. Oh, the age group names. Yeah. So now, oh, yeah. I still say it all the time. But, oh, I said it earlier. So I, well, I guess we can't say it on you the had, Yeah. You, you're the one that reminded me of the certain, what they're called, you're not allowed to say anymore. Anyway, so it was uh, under 14, and someone had asked me, like, why don't you ref? And obviously, it, it was younger kids, but it's, it doesn't even matter, like, there are three or four years younger. Like, it's, you still have coaches yelling. You still got, now you got, I got little kids yelling at me for whatever. And it's like, but yeah, you, you have to, and at first, I, I was like, I was scared, but they had put me with an adult. Yeah. Right. And I had a couple adults that didn't give a shit. Like they didn't take me under their wing. It's like, oh my god, like help me out here, but I'm getting bombarded. Like, and then so from that point on, I, I said if I continue with this refing, I'll always make sure. Like so, I've had to deal with a few refs for the first time. One of them was Paul. Um, he's obviously he's a veteran now. Yes. But when he first started, like he was nervous. Yeah. Same thing, all this stuff. And there's every league has a different rule. And I talked to him, like, you know, we'll be okay, but I'll take the lead. I said, just make sure we're on position, we'll be good. And now like he's you know, he's you know, I, I'm extremely confident that he can always there's always a place for him in my league. Right? So it's you just gotta deal with different stuff all the time. And it, if it's different leagues, like like you said, you went from my summer league. But you, like you said, they probably they gave you a couple passes. Yeah. But you were a good guy. But you, the thing about you, which I try and do when I ref, is that I communicate with the players. Like if you even see before the game starts, even just say, what's up, guys? It's not like even one of your sponsors, Joseph, I met him through hockey. Okay. Right? He actually reminded me today. I don't even remember Yeah, I heard this. you gave him a couple penalties, man. Is that true? <laughs> well, I did. But before that, he was reminded, he was when he, because he's younger than I am, but he remembers when he was playing there and I was coaching there. So he, and then he said one summer league, he goes, uh, he goes, you coach me. Like, and, but obviously this is before he had facial hair and he's a big shot real estate agent. So I didn't, it was him. So I thought I met him like over 10 years ago. So on this Friday night league that uh, he plays in and then I used to play him but refed, um, he would be one of those guys that would give me a hard time. Like not, he wasn't vulgar, yeah. but there was a few penalties he didn't like that I called on him. Yeah. And he just, he would let me know it, usually throughout the game. Yes. And then if there was someone else that he thought maybe did something, he would like have a little chirping point. But, yeah. but when I leave, but like I said, it wasn't vulgar. And I know when the game, for me, when the game's over, it's over. And a lot of the guys are good like that. And they'll still come up to me and shake my hand after the game and say, and they'll explain themselves. So and I always say, but I get it. I get it. It's a passionate game. And I go, listen, and I'll tell him, I go, this is how I saw it. This was my angle. You got a different angle. I got to call it from mine. Yes. And that's it. And then they say, okay, I, you're right. You're right. Or I'll say, so, and I'll say, if I missed it, I apologize. But what I saw was that call. So if you're good at communicating, which I know you are, you just, that's how you move forward. I think it's just, they don't, because I, I know you've ref some guys that I know, I, I know that I've ref with and I, I used to have as a ref. They don't know how to communicate. It's like, as soon as that player talks, he's thrown out. Right, and it's like, but like, oh, he's asking you a question, right? And they have no time. It's like, but then don't ref, like, don't ref then. I appreciate if you, you hate sure. your job, then yeah. do something else. Oh yeah, no, I, I really appreciate you bringing that up because it's so true and it comes up over and over again. So now I just want to change things up a little bit. I had like I I have a lot of ideas for this, right? Like, I love this type of job so much, being a part of the game again, be trying to have control of the game. You know, interacting with the players, that's what I did when I played. But I want to change the game of refing a little bit. I want to change it up. It's a little bit boring to this point. A lot of people don't really respect the officials as much as they should. Now, I think that there could be a lot of ideas that could open up that could make things more interesting. One thing, they got to mic up the refs once in a while, man. I, I would love to be mic'd up. I would love to hear people hear the players and the refs interacting. They have no yeah. idea. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah. Let's hear it. We like to clap for each other around. Yes. Well, what? Yeah, okay, but one more time. Okay, okay, okay. One more time. Yeah, yeah, you go. You go. It's your mic'd show. up. Body cam. Yeah. Body cam has to happen. Yeah. Body, hey, listen. 
Whoever is in charge of the NHL refereeing, please listen to these <laughs> ideas. Make the game more exciting. The NHL ratings in the States are so low, we need to get it up. We need to get guys that are able to get out there and entertain people, even if they're officials. What do you think about that? No, that's, I, I've always had, I always loved the idea of, of a ref being Mike. I always had an idea of some kind of documentary, um, if it was uh, different ideas, but whatever, just like men's house league, even though it's, it's a house league, but the guys that play in it take it seriously. That's their night. That's their night out. That's their Friday to whatever it is. And then with, you know, you throw in the refs, like out, like, you know what I mean? I, I, that's always been on my mind, especially the ref up because the ref gets to hear a lot and they can say a lot. And it, hopefully most of the time it would be entertaining. The also, ref can say a lot. Right? It is very, very entertaining. Yeah, I, I just I, wish that people The body hear. cam I never... The body cam is gonna. That's happen. a great idea, but I just for me, it would, I always yeah. wanted to do the mic. The mic up, always. Like, like honestly, like, like when I get on the ice, first thing I do, exactly what I did when I played, I go out, I try to see who kind of the bigger, tougher guys are. I'll be like, hey guys, settle down, make sure I don't get involved in these scrums, like yep. whatever. You know, talk to the players, guys that you know, you can kind of you know say hello, whatever, whatever. If someone makes a good play, I like to tell them. I do it man, all the time. That's Heck of a pass. I do it right? all the time. They'll be like, oh, thanks. Yeah. Like, they're not used to the yeah. refs interacting. I do that all the you time. You know what I mean? And nice shot, nice that, pass. Yeah, that's great. A lot of people don't understand that, that follow the game, how much of, how much we are involved in the game. But that's why I want to kind of implement some of these new rules, a reality show for referees. Something, like something interesting to make it better. Now, I just wanted to do a couple mentions before we get into, in, in, into the next thing, because there's... There's a lot of people along this journey, Sean, you being the first one, that have really helped me along the way, that have given me the opportunities, that have made me feel comfortable. So Scott Van Slyke was a gentleman that actually got me into the Chesswood and the Downtown Hockey League. Um, Fabio Canto, Keith Tarala, Matthew Lund, who we're going to be hearing from very soon. Matthew, well. Matt, is Matthew the guy who does the Head and Shoulders commercial? Ma you know what, no. Matthew Lund, I, 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 it's rumored that he, he has had some hair product advertisements. He's got the best hair in Toronto, so we're definitely going to see. And of course, Les McDonald, I, I have to mention too. I know Matthew's a big fan of Les as well. Um, that guy's unbelievable how he travels to, to do the refing and stuff like that. It's pretty cool. Um, so I, another thing that I kind of wanted to get into now, Sean, is I wanted to ask you if you have ever had experience with somebody entering the OHL referee combine? Uh, no, I, there's a couple guys that throughout the years of, especially working at the arena, that I knew guys that had like say level five refing, and I always would ask them like, what, like why don't you, why don't you try the OHL? And they've had opportunities, and um, if they've gone, I don't, it's been so long I don't remember, and I remember a lot of them weren't, because they're not wanting to go to the level that you want to go at and they weren't there there's yeah. like it was just part-time because i they said for them doing the ohl like time you break down what they get paid for what time you have to get there yeah, yeah. um and the time you have to leave mm -hmm. and then depending where it is like you I mean you obviously say ohl it's not like to some GTA, guys, it's, it's not, not the gta it. it's ontario yeah. and some southern u.s states right? oh yeah so oh, yeah. the breakdown is like it's not really worth it for me because he wasn't trying to get a career in the nhl Yes. But obviously someone like you trying to get in that combine, I think that'd be amazing for you if you can somehow get in there this year. The OHL referee combine, and the reason why I'm saying this is I, I need good vibes from all the viewers and listeners, all these incredible people that are here right now. The OHL combine is going to take place in June. Now, I applied for this. Okay. Last year, there was about 250 applicants. They accepted about 70 referees. Okay. Then they do the breakdown of how many of those refs actually refed in the OHL, Everyone else that was a part of it got good gigs, you know, in, in the lower levels, just underneath the OHL. So now, this combine is known to be people that are between the ages of 20 and 30. Now, yours truly just turned 42. What's on my side is a lot of these refs are not former players. A lot of these refs didn't play professionally for a long period of time. Right. There's reasons why people get to play for a long period of time. They're very good with the team camaraderie, they're very good in the dressing room, and they're very good with supporting their teammates or fellow officials. Right. And when you have those qualities, people want you around. So, regardless of you being maybe five or 10 years older, if you're able to check all those boxes, 
if you have the size, if you have the physical ability, the speed. I mean, I'm kind of hinting to Mr. Cox and those guys to, to let me come in. But I just believe that if I do get into the combine, Sean, with the things that you guys have taught me, the things that you guys have told me to look for and to try to produce with, I think that I could be the most energetic guy at that combine. I think that I could be the team camaraderie. I think I'll be right in the center of it. 100%. I also believe that when the combine is over, that I'll probably be one of the guys that some of the guys are talking about. Hey, man, remember when McMorrow did this, McMorrow did that, oh, like, that was great, this, that, the other. No, you'll, but you'll if, leave their leader. It's only, but Sean, it's only because I have a huge passion for this and I really want to See, be a part of it. See, there's those hands that got me to call you on the DM. Was I all really this, want all to be a energy. part of it, brother. I know, I know. So I had the gut feeling, and like I said, you came with no experience, but I had, I had that, yes. that, that powder electricity. I appreciate I gotta, that. I got to get this guy at Bill Bolton Arena. I appreciate that, buddy. One other thing with the combine, Mr. Michael Fuda, two-time Stanley Cup champion, is one of my references, as well as Mr. Mark Hunter, who I think Mark Hunter is probably the most successful executive in CHL history, head of the London Knights, yep. is my other reference. So I'm hoping that those two gentlemen help me get into the combine. So fingers crossed for the sheriff. Speaking in third person. I thought you were hinting that you wanted a reference from me. I thought that's where you were going with this. You know what? No, I'm Sean. Sure. No, you got Mark, you got Hunter guys, and Fuda. Hey, that's... Fuda and Mark Hunter have never been on a referee show. You're oh, on okay. my referee right. show, buddy. Right, so you're number one. You're number Thank one you. for my referee right. connection. Well, you're number two and number three. Those are uh, huge names, and that's a huge... So now... Hopefully it opens that door for you. Absolutely. And I appreciate you saying that. So now, coming back to the networking with the refs, the opportunities that we have for the friendships that we make, for the connections that we can get, and the opportunities that are ahead of us, it's absolutely incredible how much that comes up, especially if you're a social person. So now, when I started refing at the Buckingham League, which is Scotiabank Pines, yep. Chesswood, and Westwood, I was able to meet this individual who right away I did notice his hair, Mr. Matthew Lund. So what I was going to do is, you know, there's a rumor that Matthew's some, somewhere in the crowd. Um, Matthew, if you're in the crowd, please come up, buddy, because we, we love to have you up here with Sean. Matthew Lund, how are you, buddy? So what we'll do is, here, Sean, we'll have you in the middle because you're staying. Matthew, there's your mic. Hey, how's um, it going? <laughs> not too bad, buddy. Thanks for coming out. No now, the, the first thing that I wanted to talk to you about, buddy, was how long have you been refing? And, and I want to talk about our first experience together, but let's start with how long you've been refing, buddy. Uh, like two and a half years. Okay. So now, is it is it just the Buckingham League that we are in? Am I, am I pronouncing it properly? Yeah, you're yeah, pronouncing okay, it right, right on. No, I do a GTHO and North York Hockey League. Nice. So those are kids' uh, minor hockey. I only did it for one year. I did Buckingham for about two years. Nice, A nice. little bit of ASHO before that. And how old are you, Matt? Uh, 31. 31 years old. Wow, okay. Okay. And um, do you commonly get compliments about your hair? Yeah, more than I do for my refing skills. <laughs> <laughs> right on, bro. So, like, I, I, I wanted to talk about the networking because me and you have obviously become really good friends, buddy. I, I appreciate you so much, man. You made things very easy for me. I don't know if you remember the first time at Sc Scotiabank Pond when they when they paired us up together yeah, yeah, do you I remember, remember. Yeah, yeah. you were running a little bit late yeah. right <laughs> I you, you, you were you know but you were down we can talk about it now because it was a little bit past right you were you were feeling down you weren't in the best mood you told me how you felt i could feel the genuineness from you I remember. so i remember saying to you you know what bro you're doing a great job i'm really looking forward to reffing with you and we're gonna absolutely crush it and I remember how you reacted to that, and it made me so happy, bro, that I was able to lift you a little bit. You did, yeah. Do you mind talking about that a little bit? Yeah, well, I, I remember when I was coming in, I had some road rage, and I was stressed about work. That's what it was. Someone almost cut you off. Yeah, yeah, and he wanted to fight and whatever, and I wasn't sure how to handle the situation, you know, so I wanted to talk to you about it. Um, so meeting you, your reputation preceded you. So the boys, that, you know, Mike and uh, John, 
and Shaggy, they had told me about you, right, when you were coming in. So I was stoked to meet you already. It was kind of ironic. A, you know, dude wanted to fight and then didn't want to square off, and I didn't know how to handle it. And I was on my way to the rink, right? So it was kind of cool when I met you. And I was coming in shook, and you, you know, you just you know, calmed me right down, took me in. You're like, oh, it's all good. We're going to have a good night. You know, you had, a, you had like a whole table of food ready to go. Thanks to my mom. Snacks <laughs> and drinks, like the work, so. Yeah, right on. It was cool. This the energy you brought right away. You know? So I mean, Matthew, like, you're a young guy, full time job during the day, aspiring referee in the evening. Well, you are a referee, but you're aspiring to always get opportunities, yeah, yeah, right, Matt? Yeah. Keep going. Keep so going. now, you decided to support my show via sponsorship. Yeah. You started a new company, Modern Mafia. Yeah. When did you start this, my man? Uh, well, we did like our first our first drop was 2019, like the winter of 2019. We came out with some beanies. Uh, we started with just 10 beanies, so it's been a few years, but we're just you know slowly getting more progressive with it, with like you know more new products, better products, better networking opportunities. Try the hat on. So, yeah, it's the, I got a big head, so I'll have to adjust this. But pretty much, I mean, the hats, the socks, I already have a few pairs of the socks. I'm not going to lie. They're the most comfortable socks I've ever worn. You got the beanies. You got the, the baseball style type caps. Do you have any other products? Uh, in the past, we've had slides and we've done like different uh, small production runs of like track suits and like custom pieces. But right now, that, right now we have like 10 pairs of socks left in black, 10 in white should be sold out hopefully in the next week or so and the first summer we have new stuff coming which you know i'll hopefully so, get you to premiere some of that yes stuff. how does one look up modern mafia is instagram the best way or is there another method uh, and then how is one to order your clothes okay so in terms of looking it up the easiest way is our instagram handle at modern mafia clothing and uh, for ordering you can get to the website from the instagram which is just modernmafia.com and you should DM us to get the password because it's for members only. So we, you have to follow the, you have to engage the social media first, and then you have to DM us. And if we like your vibe, we'll give you the password, kind of thing. Whoa, buddy! That hey, man, Matt, I wanna, I wanna thank you for coming here today. I wanna thank you for your friendship. I wanna thank you for being a great referee partner, and I wanna thank you for your incredible, incredible mind creating these incredible things hey, right here, buddy. You know, all love, thanks big bro. Thank thanks you so man. much, my man. Awesome, buddy. Tear it up for Matthew Life. Modern Mafia. Thank you, buddy. Thanks for coming, brother. See, but see Sean, like it's it, it's things like this, like 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 me and Matt are gonna know each other for the rest of our lives. Yep. You know, this was this was developed through the refereeing, through the networking. It is an incredible thing for people to get involved with. Any kids out there, the one thing when I partner with a with a younger child, younger child, with a younger person that I'm partnered with, I always say to the men, it's so good that you got involved refing at such a young age. Like I started at 40, they're starting at they started at 18, 17, now yeah. they're in their early 20s. And I think it's incredible. I think that more people should try try out the officiating. I also know that there's a lack of offici uh, officials that they're, they're you know there's the, the officials are always needed so you know the supply and demand type of stuff get, get involved there is opportunity you see how excited I am for something that's new for me at 42 years old so give it a shot if you've been thinking about it go for it ladies and gentlemen Absolutely. anything never, to add to that show? no you're 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 never you're never never too old you're never too old but it's 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 a mind it's your mind but you're not Whatever 42 means to people, you're not you're you're not 42, or you are 42. Then people are not thinking the way they're supposed to yes. be thinking. And and just before we end here, the ideas that I said to make officiating more exciting, make it more part of the game, have people have people be more interested in hockey with the whole everyone that's on the ice, not just the players. I think if anybody likes these ideas, contact me. Let's get this thing going. I want to be mic'd up right now. I want the body cam right now. I know these leagues that I ref in, they'll let me do it. I just need some help with it. Anyone that can help me do that, let's do it. Sean, what are your, as far as the refing, do you do any right now? Or are you 
kind of on a little bit of a break after your commissioner slash refing stint? Um, I, I'm a little bit on hiatus only because, as I told you, I, um, I end up getting a part-time job. Yes. Uh, with the city of Mississauga, but where I'm working is at Paramount Fine Food Center. The old Hershey Center. Which said. is your old stomping grounds yes. when you were an ice dog. Yes. Um, so I, were, I, was, I was hired as an usher and to do steelheads, uh, 905 Raptors, concerts, whatever goes through there. So a lot of the steelhead games are on Friday nights. So most of my refing was on Friday nights because my full-time job, I start at 6 in the morning, right? So, You're that, means, working so that means I'm up at 5. So when yes. I, those Tuesdays and Wednesdays when it's four games or five games and you're not done till 11, 11.30, time I get home, I'm still wired. So I'm not going to bed till like 2 and I'm waking up at 5. So I, Friday night was, but now I got this part-time gig. Um, and so that's why I have it. Not that I don't want to. Because I like you, like I, I actually I love refing. I, I love the interaction. I don't mind like the getting yelled at every once in a while. Like I, I still walk out. I also like I'll go in the dressing room and like I laugh about it. So oh my God, did you hear that guy? I, and then sometimes I might say, you know, he might have been right, yeah. but I can't let him know that. Yes. I might tell him later if I see him at the bar. I said, maybe you're probably right. But yeah. you know what I mean? Like listen, but I broke my hand refing, yeah. and I was out for three months. And I just, like something that's not going to stop me. Like I still have that passion. And, I, and I, feel, I like the interaction. I love, it's just fun. It's a different aspect. And you get to see different parts of the ice that when you don't, like you say, you don't think as a player. Like you went in there like yeah. your first day, like, you know, obviously you're lacking equipment, but obviously positioning and all that stuff, it's a whole different ball game. Absolutely. Right? So and you sure. never come off the ice. Never come you know off what the mean? ice. You know I mean? So a player, you got your, you know, Good 30, 45 second shifts. So, so. so now, Sean, just before I, I, I mention our sponsors again, um, sharing is caring. I know that you're a very talented chef, man. Can you just say a couple things about that? Well, thank I, I'm interested myself, so. Okay, I, well, thank you for calling me a chef. Um, I, just, I just love to cook. Um, I've always, like, since I was young, with my, my mom being Italian, um, so it was, food was very important to us. Um, and I, anyway, I just love doing it. I love sharing. I love, I love cooking for people. I love cooking for my kids. I love cooking for my wife. I'll, I'll cook for anybody. Um, I started a page called Sharing is Caring on Facebook, and it's for anybody. So you're there to share your food. Even if it's a rest, I love when they do the mom and pops restaurants where they support local or whatever it is. But obviously I love when people are doing their own dishes. Yes. Um, and most, probably 90% of my dishes is one of your sponsors today, which is Nutri Farms. Yes. Which is extremely family oriented. Everything they do is family oriented. Every, it's like you said earlier, grass. Yeah, let's hear it. Let's hear it. Yeah, we have to for each other. Right? Grass fed, no antibiotics, no dog shit. We've had, me and Ryan been twice. The rest, uh, Nicholas and Diane, we went, this, they gave us a tour of the farm, of their cow farm, like on the tractor trailer. Like they're involved. They're not just like, here's, here's your meat and here's your bill. There's communication, there's talking. There, I get Peter from Nutrifarm, I get massive, massive, massive support. So now I've become friends with us. So now it's not. Peter from Nutrifarms. It's my friend Peter who works at Nutrifarms. Nice. nice. You know what I mean, so it's it's an amazing. But anyway, so a lot of my because it's, not, like I said, ninety percent of my posts are that. Um, I have other ideas that I have. Um, one of them is a, a cooking show, um, which also, uh, and I, I don't want to say too much because I don't have anything down on paper. Um, but it also involves athletics. Right on. So if this ever happens, first season. I would love to have, you know, Sean, the Sheriff McMurrow, as a guest. Amen. I, right? would, I would be honored. But it's very, it's like I said, it's food and sports. Like, yeah. That's all I'll say about that. So if there's any, Let's I know you've got it. a massive crowd. Yeah. And if they're listening and someone wants to produce a cooking show, even if they don't have any experience with cooking shows, okay. any kind of produce. So I got that. And then uh, Ryan came up with an idea. He's a connoisseur of a, I don't want to say it yet, but he's a connoisseur of a certain type of food. Okay. That he says he's the expert. Okay. So we want to kind of start filming going around so Nicholas is really good with the, the camera or the phone so he would be the videographer so Ryan would be the, the talent nice and going to wherever they sell that dish yes. and him rating it yes um, and if we happen obviously within Mississauga that's our, our region that we live in but if we're traveling whatever we want to try different things mm -hmm. so I'm gonna push that as a more as like a YouTube channel right on. Um, I kind of have a name for it, but like I said I don't want to Give it, I don't want anyone stealing my ideas yet. Yeah. And um, and after today, um, I've been asked a few times, and other people have said you should do this. I'm possibly thinking of doing a podcast. That's um, cool. A bit like it'd be a bit of everything. 
So it'd be like sports, yeah. obviously cooking. I love movies. I love television. Anything else, home improvement, paint protection film, tin, whatever, whatever. But anyways, being here today, being behind this mic, not over there for change. Like, but I'm electric right now. Like I, yeah. I told you, I'm powder. Yeah. So or if he was a good guy, it'd be electro from Spider Man. Okay. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's I, I, I'm pumped, and this is that this is because of you. I, I gave you the refing. You're giving yes. me the okay. passion that I want to have my own mic in front of me. And uh, so I definitely want to thank you for that. No so problem, I'm gonna, hey, these are things I, I'll be working on. I appreciate that so much. So so just real quick, I mean, we mentioned the Nutra Farms. Joseph Tucci, incredible real estate agent, guys. He is on Instagram. I follow him now. Very cool dude. Value, integrity, and performance is the man's blueprint. If you're interested in buying any properties or selling, contact Joseph Tucci. And jo Joseph knows a lot of restaurants in the Toronto area. He, ch he doesn't just sell like he gives places to go also. If it's Casa Loma or this restaurant, that, like he doesn't just sell. Like he's, a, he's like you. He's a person of the community. He's incredible, man. I'm yeah. very impressed with that guy. Modern Mafia, I can't say enough with Matthew. Raymond LaRose supporting us since day one. Yeah. Looking to start a youth center in the future, Mr. Raymond LaRose, one of my great friends. Thank you so much, Raymond, for supporting our show. And Sean, to be honest, buddy, like I'm not even halfway through my notes. We are about a half an hour over the time. I had okay. such a good time with you, buddy. Before I was just showing the time and I couldn't oh, okay. believe it. But anything else you'd like to say, let's say it right now. I do. I, one thing I'm going to ask you, two, I'm gonna, kind of three things, I'll make two of them quick. One is, um, Who's your mom's favorite player in my summer league? So it's more of a trivia question okay. for you. Okay, so I think... I know you know the number. No, I, I, you know what? I, I'm just going on what I think. All right, well, let's bring her up and ask her herself. Oh, Does she, she's my reason yeah, tall guy. This is the last thing. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Sheila McMorrow, the reason for Catherine, Sean, Patrick, and Liam's all, all of our success. I have no so, idea. Yeah. Hey. I, have, hey. I have no idea what the boy's name was. He was very handsome and very tall, and he came up and he gave me a compliment. So clearly that was why now, I loved him. Okay, so I believe, now I'm having a brain fart with his name, but the gentleman that I put on the comments yeah, for him to come, the defenseman that was going to Montreal. That's, that's uh, Max. Dragus, Max. Yeah, that's Drag Max. Okay, that, so that's not the, no, the player? No. no so no, who no. is it, man? Just spill the beans, man. Marco Tinto. Marco Whoa. Tinto. Okay, that's cool, man. Right on. Okay. So, Mom, brothers. one more question for you. What What's your thoughts on this refing? Like, what, like, like, you know? Well, in general, I'm very excited about the refing, and uh, I never said one bad thing about refs. All the <laughs> hockey games I've been at, and I'm very <laughs> proud, and I'm really, really, really excited that. The interaction is taking place, and there was a tournament a couple of weeks ago, and a little fella was so upset because he lost, and he was he fell on the ice. In the and finals, he was yeah. Beside himself, and my son Sean skated up to him and lifted him up and told him he did great and he was going to get a cup anyway, and that's what's most important. That's what we want to do. We want to carry this hockey game to every level of communication. And it's all about love. That's it. Yep. Ladies and gentlemen, Sheila McMorrow. Woo! Woo! Thank you, Mom. Thank you, dear. All right, Sean, I mean, this was a blast, buddy. I, I'm like I can't I can't believe how much fun I had. This is one of my favorite episodes of oh. all time, buddy. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you so much for coming right. on, my friend. Can I say one more thing? Yes, no? of course you can, brother. Um, this is more of a, I guess a, like a little bit of a public announcement. Um, I just want people, all of Sean's audience, everyone that's watching, everyone that may be coming new to Sean because of this episode. Um, two almost two years ago, I my uh, I have a brother who had a massive uh, stroke, and he's still recovering. Like he's like zero. A recovery he's still basically in the same position oh he's, he's gotten a little bit better but not much but he was in a, when this happened he was in a dark place like yes. extremely dark um where he was running and hiding from me okay. where i didn't know how bad um his depression was um his addiction and so uh, never mind that his high blood pressure sleep apnea bad diet loved his salt and doing like a ridiculous amount of of drugs and he ended up having this massive stroke. But if he had someone, he obviously thought he had no one to talk to. And 
I'm sure there's a lot of people. I know you've hit some dark places. I, yeah. I mean, everyone probably has. People deal with certain ways and are able to overcome that darkness. Some people can't. They get stuck and they feel they have no one to talk to. But I know for a fact, there's always, you're going to think that there isn't one person. There is. There's always one person. If you still don't think there's one person, um, you can reach out to me through, uh, say, my Instagram, which is SeanMac9. Um, there's Sean, who's willing to help anyone. And, and the, the Sheila's story of your, that just proves, like, you could just got off the ice. Yep. And just said, yeah, you know, good game. Just walked away. But you don't. You I did. Couldn't. That's I not you. I lifted right? him right, right off his feet. Right. Get up here, man. I watched how good you played all tournament. And there's two other guys I want to mention that I know they would be there for you. One is uh, Jim Thompson. Yes. Who's also a friend of mine. Who I met him uh, probably 15 years ago. I was working part time. This at Jim Thompson. Jim Tom. Okay. Jim Thompson without a P. Yeah, yeah. This Red, is Jim Thompson. That's Jim Thompson. NHL heavyweight Jim yeah. Thompson. Yes. And. I got to know him a little bit. We get to chat a little bit, usually through uh, DM now, but I had met him about 15 years ago. I, I used to work at a re Italian restaurant I used to serve, and yeah. him and his family had come in. I knew who he was right away when he came in. Yeah. He was, as you know, he's like one of the most loving guys. He was like super friendly, but I know, and you know, his dark, his path that he had gone Absolutely. and came it's back. It's a great story. And I know he would help anyone, yes. as he does. Dude. And then the other guy who I met because of you, because of this show, and when he was... Uh, a guest on your show, he said some key words that triggered to me is like the stuff with my brother. And I want to say Paul Rosen. So he also got, you know, he doesn't mind Paul me Rosen, saying, yeah. I know he wants people to reach out to him when they're because Paul's story is unbelievable. I, I read his book in, in a weekend and his story is that in the same day, he, you know, he was the highest that you can possibly be in one. And that same very day, he was rock bottom. And thank God he's still here. Obviously, because his book and it's never give up, and he's continued to never give up and help people. So it's not to bring a downer on the end of this episode, but no, no, this there's is, always this somebody is stuff to help. That needs to be talked about. It's very important, Sean. I appreciate yeah, you bringing you. it up. But I just, I just want the audience to know. So you're speaking directly to your brother right now. Yes. So your brother's yes. watching the show. You're speaking directly to him, yep. letting him know that he can he can reach out to you, he can reach out to me and everyone else that you yeah. mentioned, correct? So yes. That is unbelievable. And he's Sean. in a spot right now where he's not in a good place that he actually doesn't want to be here right now, so we're trying to convince him. Reach it's out. Worth. We got you, buddy. I want to thank the listeners for tuning in to another episode of The Sheriff. We'll see you next time, guys. Thank you. Woo! Woo!